Jan, if you're home, hey. Is anybody home today? Hey, hey. We're fixing to make up a quick soup with the leftovers of what I had in my refrigerator of love and light. I thought you might like to join me to just use what we have on hand. Keisha in the house. How are, how are you? Is that Keisha? I think I called you the wrong name the other day. Did I? Hey, Missy Pitt. We're having, first of all, is this shirt appropriate and can you see? I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? So, friends are in the house. Hello, Susan Elizabeth. Hello, beautiful. I've been seeing that you have been making your way back to the land of love and light. And hey, hey, we've been waiting for you here. So anyway, um, yesterday I had a big outing and it is very exciting. I'm going to tell you about some upcoming things, but not this minute. I pronounced it right. You all are getting me sidetracked because, see, I really want to chat, but I'm here to show a recipe. Stay on track, Tanya. So, anyway, I have a listen and all that. I mean, kind of. So, yesterday, we went out all day. Greggy, not so raw, which <laughs> Griffin, I said, Greg, Tanny and Greg, Tanny raw and Greg, and Griffin said, Greg far from, I said, Greggy raw, and Griffin said, Greg far from raw. Listen! Start where people are. That's okay. You know, I feel like a lot of times we we think unless it's just exactly like this path we're on, it's not okay. It's the name of the game now in the world, isn't it? It's either you think like I do or you're wrong. Let me yell at you and scream at you till you believe like I do or you're wrong. I'm just not about that. I'm about you being the best version of yourself. And I love that because it's quite freeing for me to be myself. So anyway, we were out all day and we had um, packed some things to bring along to eat and all. We had a little bit before we left, but I watched Greg have a blood sugar issue and he's a person that can, what seems like on the outside, tolerate any food, right? Which we know that's doing things to your insides. But some of us can't tolerate any of that. I feel like the kind of foods he eats would put me in the hospital. I know they would. So, okay, but I watched him really it was a whole, not a situation, but he was not his optimum. And I want to tell you about that because just think about, you may think you feel great, but how good could you feel? You might just not realize how great you could feel, right? Or you might even be thinking, well, I know I could feel better, but here we are at the end. We're, we're halfway through October this year's shot. Oh, but is it? Because you're thinking, oh, I had this big grand vision, 2020. It was the vision of the best version of myself. And then crickets, I mean explosion, you know, and that didn't happen. Okay, and let that be the rise of you, not the demise of you, right? So, for example, you could be thinking, you have two and a half months left of this year. You could change your world, change your health, change your destiny in two and a half months. You could be entering into 2021 as the one who has healed. How about that? You absolutely could take your health into your hands. Health is your birthright. Did you know? And if you don't have that right now, you can achieve that. You can achieve your next level of health, then your next level. And we're all the same like that. We're all looking for our next level of health, probably if you're here. Or maybe you haven't even come to that decision yet. But stepping over that line in the sand, deciding this is the route I'm taking. All this other food isn't my food. And I really noticed it in myself yesterday, as I do every day, but we went in this apple place. I'm going to tell you that in a minute, but um, I just thought it didn't occur to me to have apple pie a la mode. It didn't occur to me to have apple gummy bears, or it didn't occur to me also to drink kerosene. You see what I mean? None of that's my food. But what it, well, it was vegan. Okay, well, so is vegan dog food. That's not my food either. It's, it either is my food or it isn't, right? 
That's just like, you know, years ago, we used to be able to make a commitment to something and stick to it. Like you got married, you know, and then you saw another man in, in the line at Costco's over there. He was beside you and, and he had a cute honey, but that's not your man. You didn't go over there and just like, you know, that is not your man. You have made a commitment and he was with his girl. You see what I mean? Like, can we not stick to anything now? <laughs> on with the soup. So anyway, we are back at the cottage of Love and Light, and I have been in Asheville for a few days. And let me tell you this first, if you watch on my Instagram, if you don't, I don't know what you're doing. Tanya Royal Instagram, and up in the stories, I bring you with me every day. A pair like, oh, what do you, what, what do you eat in a day? Tell me exactly what to eat in a day. If you could do just a whole series, if you could do 30 days of what you eat in a day, I could do that, and then I would know exactly what to do. Not necessarily. Are you eating McDonald's for breakfast, Burger King for lunch, and Long John Silver's for dinner now? Well, so you probably shouldn't step over here to what I'm doing because you're not gonna know where to fall to other than back to fast food. You see what I mean? Also, maybe you're a triathlete or maybe you're a granny who likes to sit in a rocker and knit all day. Maybe you're a person who needs less calories or more. Maybe it, there's a lot of variables in that. So I almost find it at this point, I, I used to not really think this through that much, but when you're showing what I eat in a day and you are gonna spell it out exactly, it's irresponsible to some people because you are going to give people less than they need or more than they need. And then they're like, well, why am I not losing weight? But yet you didn't need that many calories. You don't understand that, oh, well, she, she had a smoothie and she said she had this many bananas, but I'll just add three or four more on in there. Okay, that's not gonna work either. So that's why I don't really do that at this point because I like to work with people one-on-one. -on -one. I like to work with my groups where I can say all the words that could ever be said about one scenario, you know? But um, anyway, over on my Instagrams, you can see a lot of what I'm eating in a day and all. But in the cottage here, I had left growing microgreens. Um, if you will come over there and watch the stories every day, I give you lots of tips and tricks, you know? Sometimes people want to send me a question like, uh, how do I do it? Okay, I, I can't type all that out. Like that, you have to follow along, you know what I mean? Well, I couldn't do it because you didn't tell me how. That's the kind of excuses people love to main, make now because we live in a victim mentality. You know, well, I couldn't do it. Well, she did. Well, they didn't. Well, I, I couldn't do it because you couldn't do it because you didn't make it happen. You make it happen or you make an excuse. So come over there to Instagram and join me every day where I'm showing this kind of thing. So these are radish microgreens, okay? So I have three more of these in the refrigerator, but these are regular um, radish microgreens and purple radish microgreens. This is a great way to store these, and I've showed y'all this before. I left these from Friday until today, mid-morning, mid without watering them, and I showed you how I did it. I brought the trays over from the cabinet of Love and Life where they have lights, turned those off, brought them here in front of this window, I'm just standing in front of a small kitchen window and I raised the blind half the way. And this gets like, the sun comes up really over there in the corner so it's not exactly blaring in. So it got several hours of sun each day and I made sure those flats were very moist on the bottom. Not on the top, not watering on the canopy of the microgreens once they're taller because you are gonna create a humid situation where mold and fungus could grow. You want to water from the bottom, which I show you over there on my Instagram. Join me over there. So anyway, um, then today I got back and I trimmed all these. When you trim these, you don't wanna think, oh, well, I'll water them one more time and then I'll, I'll store them up. That's a bad idea because the more dry you can put them in these, which are Debbie and our green boxes, the, the more longevity you're gonna have out of these. Every time you open these to serve yourself, what you wanna do is take a little rag and you wanna drop any tiny condensation on that, which I'll do in a minute before I put these up. That way, the more dry they stay, the longer they're gonna last for you. These will last a good week, possibly 10 days, if you store them right. Here's a larger Debbie Meyer green box. This, um, this style Debbie Meyers you can get at Walmart, um, I think at Bed Bath & Beyond, places like that. I also have some bigger ones, but I really like these for storing the microgreens. Um, and as, look, you can even store them sitting up like this. Now these, you see I've cut at the bottom, right? And I mean, they're just dry. If you were to water them right before you put them in here, obviously you're putting moisture in the box. These boxes let the off gases of fruits, veggies, greens, microgreens, and sprouts out of the box, but not let external air in. They also 
keep them from getting moist and condensating in there except that little condensation on the top, which you can draw off. So um, here we have more of them, you see. These are the clover microgreens. These don't grow quite as tall, but this is a hardy batch. As you see, they're stored very dry and delicious. Y'all, if you are not on board with the flavor of these, clovers are, um, radish are a little stronger, you know. They have a little kick to them, a little spice, but um, alfalfa, broccoli are pretty mild. Now they have a little more of a sulfur smell and so do turnips. Um, something else I grew the other day, what was it? I'll think of a minute, anyway, a little more sulfur coming off so it's a little stronger smell, but they taste very mild. But anyway, these right here, I trimmed some, of the, one of these packs I pulled out, but as you see, they're just very dry. Y'all, the nutrition in the living food is next level. Trust me, I have seen so many gains in my health since I have switched, not even switched, I've been eating living foods for years, but even edging out some of my raw foods, because you can only eat so much with living food, raw and living food for the win. For hair growth, skin, nails, teeth, my teeth, uh, gum recession, it just happens as you get older, you know. I'm almost 49, last time I went to the dentist, they had actually tightened down a little bit. I forget the millimeter or whatever she called it, but she was like, what? Let me check the chart again because apparently that doesn't happen. I don't, I don't know, but uh, I mean, you throw even this much in your smoothie, really delicious. Um, somebody's talking about the smell. Broccoli microgreens and sprouts smell a little more pungent, but um, clovers are very mild. The radish are pretty mild too. Alfalfas are mild. I want to show you where I had any of these roots. I'm sorry, this is not really what I came here to talk about. Okay, so these I just kind of pulled up and as you see, we still have a little bit of the seed jackets at the bottom, which is fine. You can eat those. You can also just rinse them off, but it's fine. Um, sometimes people ask me the difference between sprouts, which means sprouting in a jar, and microgreens where you're gonna grow more on a, on a flat, you know? what the difference is. Well, I could go into all that. Maybe I'll make just a specific video on that. If you're interested in sprouting or sprouting made easy, how to start sprouting, how to do microgreens, you can type that in here on my search bar and it'll come up for you. But you know, microgreens and sprouts are living food, live enzymes, live food for a live body. But the microgreens, it is that stint of from when they're sprouts and they have the starting to get their root and starting to get their shoot. When they get up to the, it, it'll look like the first leaf, but it's called the cotyledon stage. It's before the first true leaf. It's, a, it's the first little leaf, but it's before the first true leaf. That is the most nutritious stage of the baby plant. It can be 10 to 40 times more nutritious than their grown counterparts. This is a big deal. If you have a hard time getting in fruits and veggies and greens, microgreens into your diet, I would lovingly suggest you do so because when you can build your immune system up, you might be able to survive in this world and even thrive, you know? So you can add a little bit of these into the mix. Like let's say you're a person who really can't hardly stand it. You, so maybe you take a little bit of clover or alfalfa sprouts, okay? And you put the, those into your banana smoothie. Maybe that's not even sweet enough for you. You add a date or two or whatever, but you're getting in that balance of vitamins and minerals. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Stacy. So, but for right now, we're gonna have a soup. Now this, before you're all in the comments asking me about this blender, I will come to you with a review. I have a new toy in this kitchen, but I do not wanna overstep about the majesty, stop, about this blender. Okay, so anyway, you could use a Dollar General blender, okay? Is it gonna be a smooth? Probably not. Is it gonna be as delicious? I don't know. It's gonna have a different texture, but it's gonna be just as good for you, and that's where I started. And I burn out blender after blender after blender until I finally got what was an OmniPro, and I bought it refurbished, and then I finally got a Vitamix, and then I upgraded, and then at one point I had a KitchenAid. Um, that guy's name was Mr. Pearl. That's what I called him. I thought I was gonna marry him, but then he did me dirty. Every time he would start to get warm and warm up, you know, he would cut off. It was like a tease, you know what I mean? So I had to take him back. So anyway, we'll discuss this later, okay? So anyway, what we have in here is what's left over. So let's see what went in here. We had, and I don't even know if we're gonna need more water or what, okay? We have a quarter cup of raw walnuts. 
Those were soaked and drained for six hours. Okay, why do you wanna do that? You wanna do it so they're more digestible, okay? So the enzyme inhibitors can fall to the side and you can uptake the nutrients more easily. And also, it creates a creamier soup or sauce or um, dressing, okay? So anyway, we have that. We're measuring that out ahead of time because I'm looking for the amount of calories and fat I want in that soup. Maybe you like more and maybe you like less, but we're not here to debate that right now. So a quarter cup of walnuts. Then we have four of these mini peppers, okay? So these mini peppers look like this, right? And I just keep the whole thing on. I use season everything and the stand because after all, it's a green thing. So we have that, four of those. And you can use whatever color you had. I had, I don't know, two red and two orange. And then I had one to one and a half cup of peeled zucchini. And it was really the middle of zucchini because I had made some zucchini noodles and you have the middle, it won't noodle as well, but you keep it because it's great for bulking up. So we had that. And then we had um, one tablespoon of dulse flakes. I want to get the iodine in there and the minerals and it gives a nice salty flair, okay? So then we also had, um, oh yes, we had three or four tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Now, Recipes, you know, whether you like them or not, depends on your taste buds. So if, if at first you think, I might not like that much lemon, so add less and then add more because it's hard to take it out. But if you ever have too much of one tone, like salty, sweet, acidic, or fatty, what you wanna do is you wanna mute that down either by bulking it up a little bit more or adding more of the other ingredients and then understanding that that's twice as much as you would have had and has some for tonight and then have some for tomorrow night. So you bulk it up and make more of the recipe, you know, and use a less of say that acidic component. Okay, then we had a little cube of fennel, okay, because I have that on hand and because it helps prevent gas and bloating. Everyone wants that, right? Then we have one cup of celery we had a couple of little red pop uh, tomatoes in there, you see? And then we had, um, I don't have any water yet. What else did I have? Oh yes, I have a tablespoon of Mexican Fiesta seasoning by Frontier Brand. Mm -hmm. These were on sale the other day at Whole Foods in case you saw that. I was gonna use these, which is the garlic and herb, but, oh, actually that was this one, but I didn't because I was, Wondering what that one was, and I'm not sure. Anyway, so this is what we have so far. I'm gonna add a little bit of water, we're gonna get it blended, and then on top of that, I'm gonna make a delicious soup. Now, if you don't add water, and you have a good blender, or even one that, is, if it's got a tamper, you can get it shoved down and going, okay? Some blenders, even some vacuum blenders, I had a vacuum blender not too long ago, I actually burned it out, because it was really good at vacuuming, but, it wasn't as high powered as I wanted it to be, you know, and I tried to give it the shake and it, it finally just said, woman, that, that, I, I'm done, okay? So anyway, um, it's gone, but, so, what I was gonna say is you can make this into a sauce also, right? So anyway, here we have, you can also sub out if you don't like walnuts or you're allergic, like my little girl Carly, who recently got married, did y'all see that? See if you were on Instagram, you would have seen, okay? Um, anyway, she doesn't, eat walnuts, she has an allergic reaction to those. You can use any other kind of nuts. Um, you could use almonds, you could use pecans, pecans if you're fancy and not from the south, whatever, you see what I mean? You could use cashews if you eat those, but I don't. Um, so anyway, we're gonna get this blended and we're gonna see about adding a little bit more water. So let's start with about, hmm, I know you can't see. Sometimes people say, why don't you type out the recipe under everyone else does it? Why don't you do so-and-so? Everybody else is doing it. Listen here, peer pressure people. <laughs> Spelling is not my specialty, okay? And you all do not like to sound it out, and that's not my fault, okay? So this is why I don't write it out. Plus, when you come over and you have to listen for the recipe, we might say other good stuff, you never know, right? So, in this particular blender, which we'll talk about later, and I was a little leery to come on in after, but I, I can't blend without that. A little suction going on. Fennel is great. Can anybody name that song? 
We have to wait on it to suck. I'm a <laughs> you like this shirt? It's slightly inappropriate, but this is a good shirt, y'all. It's called um shoot, it's from Athleta, which is very expensive, but this is on the clearance right now. And it was still 30 bucks, which I thought was expensive, but it had been like 70. Who pays that? Not me. This shirt, okay, it is so it's a razorback, you see which you love, and it has a built-in, it's not underwire, but it's a nice shelf to kind of, and it's compressing and holds you, and you don't need a bra, come on, huh? Even if you're like, well in doubt. Okay, so this is what we have, but you can't see, you wanna see? Yeah. Stop, look! <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, we're gonna start on low. six feet tall and I do have the beautiful broad shoulders and I love them so much and that's how the creator made me so if you don't like how they look take it up with him or her but until then we'll just hide that user's comment bam <laughs> okay so here we go Let's see what it tastes like I'll blend this up a little bit more if you all okay, weren't here waiting, but, huh? You like that? This smells very delicious. Y'all, I really, let's not be bothered by that because there are always people that are haters. They, I don't even like to say haters because Hurt people hurt people. And people that don't want to focus on getting on with their own life would much rather criticize, and it's easier to criticize someone else, right? I like how I look just fine. I, I came to terms with the fact that I'm almost six feet tall years and years ago. And um, I just think of it more like a supermodel strut. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shall we have a taste test? Very flavorful, delicious. It's got a little spicy kick from the peppers and the Mexican Fiesta seasoning. Y'all can't even say. Let me plate this up and you can see. So we're gonna pour it in the bowl and you can see, almost has like a um, slightly barbecue type flavor. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? It was that quick. It was stuff I had on hand. I didn't think, what can I put together to make a fantastic recipe for the friends? I like to show you what I really eat, and I'm going to really eat what's on hand because that's how I make this work. That's how I make it work in my budget and work year after year, okay? So that's very creamy and delicious, and as you will notice, there's this, like, no, look at that, very dense, no bubbles, nothing. So then... On top of this, I'm also going to have some of the purple kale. One of these days, what I would love so much is if I had like a, a setup where it was like a cooking show and you all would come over and you could see me do the things. Uh, but right now we have this and I am having gratitude for the fact that 
I'm not holding you while we're doing this. Okay, now we have some microgreens on here. This is beautiful. Sorry, you're waiting. I like to have a couple of types. I'll see what y'all are gonna say. But with the soup, I'm gonna tell you something. I have a video called How to Make an uh, How to Make a Raw Soup, Delicious Raw Soup Every Time, or something like that, or How to Make a Raw Soup. I did it a couple months ago. Um, but look at this. I mean, it takes it up. When you have the living food, it takes it up a notch. Okay. Look at that. Do y'all love that so much? By the way, this is a bon, B-O-N, bowl of nourishment. Nothing goes in this bowl except my food. Everything I need, nothing I don't. What if you got you something like that? And what if every time you ate, you only ate out of this? And by the end of this year, you could be well on your way to 2021 as the one who has healed. What do you think? So, um, anyway... What was I going to tell you about the soup? Oh, yes. So, when you're making a soup, watch that video. I might link it below after this loads up of how to make a soup every time where I really give you lots of ideas about it. But, obviously, you've got your sweet in there came from those peppers and a little bit of tomato. You see, if you want it a little more sweet, to me, this doesn't need it. You could add in a date or something. You'll see in that um, video, I'm going to tell you all the things you could add. Then, we had a salty, which was the dulse flakes which gives you a lot of minerals and iodine you need. And also, um, we had the celery that bulked up and gave you a little additional saltiness. We had the acidic of the lemon juice and we had the fat of the walnuts. And then we had all the extra flavor punches, right? Now let's say you are not eating on raw or that's not your destiny, but you've eaten raw all day long and you're not on this thought train like, oh, raw till X time of day and then binge, Corn pasta, rice, burritos, vegan, ah, but you're not getting results. You're not getting results because you got no dang plan. That's not going to work. I've known a lot of people to go vegan or raw till X time of day, gain 50, 60, 70 pounds, and they already have that much to lose. Oh, well, maybe I have metabolic slowdown. Well, maybe you did, but if you need to lose 100 pounds, you don't need to gain an additional 100 before you can lose 100. That's some backward thinking in my mind, but anyway. So, um... What I was going to say is if you are not trying to eat all raw food, maybe you've eaten all raw all day, you had a couple smoothies, you had a snack, and then at dinner, you've made this. Maybe if you have a high-speed blender, you blend this up to warm. You can get these things to boiling, okay? I don't do that. I eat raw food. But let's say you want that, and then you have a big salad on the side. I would lovingly suggest you not add the fat until after you've warmed that like that because you don't, fats change their molecular structure once cooked, okay? And this is not what you want. So anyway, or maybe you gently stir your hubbies in a pot and you had yours raw, right? Um, there's lots of ways you can do it, but this is a way. Also, we have winter coming up here in, in South Carolina and North Carolina, and, and it gets cold here. I mean, it was 33 degrees this morning. You never know it by this shirt, but um, that, that comment, you know, really makes me think about what has become of media lately. And it's not to focus on that, but it's to focus on the thought that when you come to media and you come to, let's say, we'll call it content create. Even if you're not a person that you would think, well, I'm a content creator like, like I am. It's my job. It's part of my job. You know, it's, it's, it's a small thing of my job. But um, maybe you don't think of yourself like that, but really you are content creating your life when you look at media. Do you have it set up so that you are looking, I mean, be careful little eyes what you see and be careful little ears what you hear. You start putting things in your track, what you seek, you will find. You start looking for ways to make it happen. Yesterday, we went up to um, near Boone and Blowing Rock in that whole area. If y'all know where that is, it's in North Carolina. And um, we packed some things ahead. Well, there was a smoothie and then I, we, I brought along um, some other things too. I brought the smoothie, the cantaloupe. I don't really eat melon. This is another whole talk. By the way, if you have digestive problems and you're wondering why I don't eat melon with other things, um, they don't digest well for me with anything else. And I have a video I did years ago called 
um, food combining made easy that's really good and it really breaks it down. If you're a person who comes from a long background or, or a harsh background now or, or destiny now of gut problems, it can make you think, well, I believe in raw food, but I can't digest it. I was like that too. I have a lot of videos called Raw Vegan Healing Part 1 and 2, Healing Autoimmune Disorders, How Long It Took Me to Lose 86 Pounds. All of it's there, and it doesn't cost you a dime. There's 3,500 videos, but anyway, that one on food combining talks about how melons digest at a different rate, and they're better on their own, so I kind of have those to the side, right? Then I had a smoothie, and a little bit later, I had some soaked and drained pumpkin seeds with a lot of organic greens, and it was delicious. Well, Greg had brought some things along, and he, when I had cantaloupe, he was having grapes. Well, grapes, you have to realize that these are like sugar bombs, especially if you, and maybe you love these and maybe they work for you, but I, I can tell a big difference in these. I quit eating those kind of things years ago, like cotton candy grapes, for example, or green grapes that are seedless, okay? If I do eat grapes, they're, they're global red seeded grapes, but he had these green grapes, so he had those, and there's a good bit of them, okay? And he had had some protein bars and some other Greg food, okay? That's not my food. But we stopped for, so so the grapes, blood sugar up, nothing to balance it, blood sugar coming down. So we stopped and I went to the bathroom when I came out, he had gotten some snacks and things. And the things he was eating, um, and it's not to judge it or anything, but this is exactly how I used to live. Like it was the roller coaster up and down. And it feels so good when you know what works for you and what doesn't. That's not my food. I didn't have to talk myself out of eating. I don't know, apple pie a la mode, a cheer wine, a, a, a whatever, a caramel covered apple ice cream, a, a apple cider sugar drink, none of that. None of that's my food. I didn't have to talk myself into it. You decide, okay, you become resolute, you make your decision, and you cross over that line. Are you gonna slip some? Yes, but when you do, you write it down in your journal and you say, yeah, I felt sucky after that. And you'll start to notice a pattern and you can start to ask yourself, self, how will I feel after this meal? How will I feel after this meal? Because you're only a couple minutes from over here rocking your A game to over here where you think you absolutely suck. And when you suck, well, what the heck? Everything's your food then, because after all, you're gonna begin again the next day, right? I live there so long. It's a bad place to be. And you can start to see yourself as a person, as a liar to yourself, as for the lack of a better word. And when you start showing up for some of these promises, even if you make little promises, little promises, you will start recognizing yourself as a person who shows up for the tricky things, right? It's a person with integrity. A person that you know that they say they're going to meet you down at Central Park at 5 in the morning and you're going to take a run and you don't have to think, I don't know, I don't want to run down there by myself and they usually don't show up. And that. No, you're the friend who shows up. You're the friend who shows up for you. And you can change your world like that. One little habit at a time. Start small if you need to, right? But anyway, it just made me think because after that, how will you feel after that meal? And, and Greg had that. And um, Greg has eaten vegetables now he used to not eat. He has water now he used to not drink. A lot of things he didn't do. So we have to look at the continuum of what people are on and celebrate them where they are because that is how you're going to have really a helpful hand in people's life, you know, by showing love, by having empathy and 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 sympathy and understanding where people are coming from, you know? Feel felt found. I know how you feel. You feel like you wanna have a sugar snack and you're gonna feel better. You feel like if I don't have something, I'm shaking. I mean, you feel like, I felt that way too. I felt that way every day at four o'clock when, and you give your scenario, and it's a real life scenario. Feel, I know how you feel, I felt that way too. But you know what I found? I have found the answer in my life, you know? And you don't have to do that like you're an evangelist that showed up on the scene, you know what I mean? You don't have to pack your dusty soapbox either. And maybe you just stop and they might ask you, what, what is it that you found about that? You seem to feel good, what is it? They'll hunt you down. 
People that are ready to change will seek change. You won't have to run them down. You won't have to yell at them, scream at them, cuss at them. No, they'll find you. And those are the friends I want to talk to, you know. So anyway, using what you have on hand. And, um, and there you go. Look at that. I mean, you saw me make it right here. And this is beautiful. And, you know, anytime I'm seeing pictures of food and stuff, it's just like a next level to me when I see something that's very, first of all, easily to digest right there. Then we've got, look at the colors and the living food. You know, do you have anything to say about that? Let's see what you're saying. You know, it's hard to say on this thing. Oh, Stacy, can I make some pumpkin recipes? I love pumpkin recipes. Yes, I have some pumpkin soup, butternut squash soups and different things, but I would love to do that. Maybe that would be a great project for tomorrow. Any tips about the soup video Tenny was referring to? That video, I will post it, the link to it below this video after it loads up. It'll take it just a little bit and then I'll post it up. Um, but you can find it, how to make a raw soup. And it was made just a couple of months ago. But most of my videos, I mean, you can, well, they're all there, but you can go to the search bar and find most of what you're looking for, you know? So um, anyway, I love you. Thank you for coming over to the Kitchen of Love and Light. and. And being friends who want to be the best version of yourself in this very dark world right now. You know, you are the people of light. You really are. I mean, the people that want to get to the next best, best version in their health, you know, body, soul, mind, and spirit so that you can be all you're intended to be in this world. You're the brave people because how much easier is it to just say, I'm fine. How are you today? Fine. How are you? Fine. Fine. Are you really? Are you fine with being fine? I don't think so. You're worth more than that, did you know? So I love you, and I'll be seeing you this week in the cottage for some more recipes and more chit-chat.